Hey there, Stanford fans. It's the bootleg post-game report here for the 118th big game. For the sixth time in a row, Stanford wins it 35-22, to and maybe no number means more than the fact that Stanford has a one-game lead over Oregon with zero games to play in the Pac-12. The Cardinal wins the Pac-12 North Championship, and I don't think there's much surprise, or anyone who saw this game knows who the headliner was. Well, zero is the nice magic number to have, RJ. Uh, this was uh, certainly not a huge surprise. We did expect to win this game, but uh, Cal came, you know, the Bear Raid or whatever they call it, they threw for nearly 400 yards. I can't recall 400 yards hurting much less than this one because uh, really, even though the, surprisingly Cal had the uh, the dominant time of possession by several minutes, which is not something we're used to seeing. Uh, it seemed like we, we weren't getting the ball very often, but when we did, it was the Christian McCaffrey show. Absolutely. Christian McCaffrey goes for 389 total yards, 192 of them coming on the ground. He was spectacular. He got them in small chunks. He got them in giant chunks, none bigger than the 98-yard kickoff return to end the first half. Right. When when Cal uh, had, uh, had scored and there was less than a minute, I think, Left, left to go. You know, people thought we were going to be mailing it in. Probably conservative, uh, run the ball a couple times. But Christian uh, was ready for a special night, so he uh, he wowed the crowd with with a uh, with a kick return that, on top of his 49-yard catch and run with about three or four cutbacks that uh, that took everybody's breath away. It was really really a special night. And with his, I'm going to say it was 280 yards or so of uh, of all-purpose yardage in the yeah. first half. I mean that 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 already had set it up for a, a run at. Glenn Milburn's uh, uh, record from 1990 in the big game when he went for 375. And, uh, boy, it's uh, hard to believe 25 years have passed. I was at that game and remember Milburn going wild. He and Russell uh, White basically were trading punches all night long and uh, ended up being one of the terrific uh, games in the series. But Chris McCaffrey, I don't know, anyone who uh, wants to find someone who's a better all-around player uh, or, or knows how to uh, come, come through in, in crunch time, I, I'd like to see it because he's really been unbelievable. Yeah, I think the Heisman, the wild calf campaign is in full effect at this point. Social media was all about him tonight, which was something really good to see. I was thinking they'd have to wait till next week to get his push going, but I kind of feel like it's going right now. And speaking of next week, getting this win out of the way, and you don't want to talk about big game as getting it out of the way, but given what happened in college football today, there are still some big things for Stanford to play for, and it certainly starts next week against Notre Dame. Well, it's nice that Notre Dame didn't drop a game right before this. It's good to have them come in and uh, and be ranked in the top five and give us a chance to really add to uh, the Stanford resume. Uh, boy, looking at that all-purpose, we all focus on the the, the unbelievable all-purpose game that, uh, that Christian has, that he possesses, not just tonight, but every night, it seems. But somewhere lost in this mix is how outstanding he truly is as a running back. I mean, we, yeah. we see we see the returns, we see his versatility and the passing game, and all, but he is putting up 140, 50, 70, 190 yards in games. These are some of the most uh, productive rushing performances in school history, and he's doing it on a weekly basis. Yeah, I think two big points. 6.6 .6 yards per carry, and what you've been saying, against defenses that know he's getting the ball. Not only that, but we use him to sort of soften up the defense. We use him in situations where we're probably not expecting to get more than one or two yards. Uh, if we wanted to be more selective, he'd probably have a higher average than that. But then then, after giving him the ball, I don't know, maybe 24 times at that point, they finally decide to use him as a decoy. They give the little reverse to Bryce Love, and Bryce Love, uh, if there are guys on this on our team any faster than Bryce Love, I've never seen him. Uh, he is really, really something to see, and uh, it's it's pretty exciting to think that you can you can do the one-two punch with those guys. Yeah, and even in a showcase game for Christian McCaffrey, I think it shouldn't be lost. Other big playmakers showed up today. I think Francis Owusu, a name not everyone knows about yep. huge catch in the red zone to yes. set up a touchdown and of course the Bryce an Love important play. Score, uh, important score too, a very right? important score answering a Cal touchdown back so even on a night like this where Christian McCaffrey deserves headline status Stanford found a way to showcase its offensive talent and I mean I'll throw it to you the historian 
just the quantity of playmakers on this team. Well, what and, is the comparison? And it's, and it's not just playmakers, right? We've always, we've had a lot of spectacular All-Americans and Heisman, you know, candidates and things in the past. But this team really has some tremendous role players. I mean, look at Ramon Wright. This guy is so good at what he does. And he did it again down at the goal line. Everybody thought he was stuffed and he just refuses to go down. So guys are playing special roles, you know, and we've, we've, we've highlighted the, the Brennan Scarlets. We've, we, Aziz Shatu uh, uh, was playing with his hair on fire tonight. I, he had some attitude going, and, he, and uh, uh, there were a couple guys over on that Cal sideline. I know 73 was, uh, was uh, talking some smack all night long. Uh, so there was some spirited rivalry there, and, uh, you know, that's good to see. Good to see. But otherwise, I thought it was a pretty clean game. Uh, it, for me, it's kind of hard to watch the Cal offense. Uh, Goff is so good, so accurate. But these timing patterns and underneath stuff and all, it kind of chips away at you. I mean, they didn't really have any any highlight kind of plays, I don't think. I, but they, they were very productive. He's obviously a talented kid, and he's going to do very well in the pros, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, we, Quick won't, release. we wow. won't stay too long on the Cal side of things. Certainly, you'd have to think they are ruining a bad red zone performance, and maybe from the Stanford point of view, a bend but don't break performance, certainly ruining that, and some very crucial penalties at bad times for Cal. Well, especially late when they were still in the game, and they got the 15-yard uh, uh, penalty. I think it was unnecessary roughness, wasn't it? And it's just that that just took them right out of what, what would, have, would have been a decent shot at a score to bring them in, in striking distance and then they had to try and settle for, uh, uh, well, it was going to be a field goal, and they went for it on fourth down. I thought it was the right decision. Yeah, they were I just agree. not, they were not going to, a lot of people thought that it was aggressive. I didn't think so. They were not going to get a lot more chances in this game, and right. they really couldn't rely on Stanford not being able to score the rest. So, no brainer decision, even though it was fourth and 12 or whatever yeah. it was. I mean, at that point, there's eight minutes, and how many eight minute drives have Stanford run over the years? I mean, you just can't assume that when you hand the ball back to Stanford in that situation, you're going to get the ball twice. Twice. They would have needed it twice if they kicked the field goal. It would have right. only been a nine-point game. So, yeah, I don't think you can be too hard on Sonny Dykes for going for it. I think Cal probably ruse the penalties. But to put a bow on it, to move forward, Notre Dame comes to town. Next Saturday night, we were, we were down just a week ago, not feeling great because of what Oregon did. But Stanford has cleared that. They bounce back. They win the Pac-12 North. And now, with two games left to play in this season, the, the impossible dream, as it were, not over yet. Well, and uh, <laughs> Notre Dame, that is a uh, fun opponent and uh, one that we would very much enjoy beating. And uh, yes. so, so when Notre Dame comes to town, uh, this is now a, a uh, uh, every two years we get to, to spend Thanksgiving uh, weekend, uh, hopefully feasting on some Irish turkey. Um, they uh, obviously, as a top five team, come in with with uh, a, you know I think a lot of confidence. But um, Stanford owes them uh, for those. Those of us that, that uh, braved the weather last year went oh, back to South Bend and, please, and, and had stop. that. Yeah, it, it, it would hurt to recollect it. But I mean, this team is, doesn't need to work hard to get up for Notre Dame. We, we owe these guys a, uh, a battle, and I'm sure they're going to get it. And, uh, you know, with, um, let's face it, uh, Christian McCaffrey just got himself back into the Heisman uh, discussion. Not that he was out of it, but he's certainly back in it now. And a chance to play on national television against the most storied uh, program in the history of college football. I hate to say it, but the time is now. Christian McCaffrey has a shot. He has a shot to take home the big one, and it could happen. He uh, He's going to need a lot of help from his teammates, and uh, you know circumstances are going to have to dictate that he gets a lot of opportunities. But if we play our game and keep possession, uh, he's going to have the opportunity you dream about, just as Stanford did against Oregon, you know, thinking that that big dream of a possible national playoff and all was alive. Now, part of that dream has to be to see if Christian can actually get it done. Stanford's had multiple guys come up a little short. He is very well positioned. Uh, there are a lot of deserving players, but he certainly is among them. And it goes hand in hand, right? Because Stanford is still playing for something as well. It's not just a case of we're rooting for Christian McCaffrey to take home the Heisman. There are national stakes now. And so a Stanford season that now sits at 9-2, and two, an outstanding season, I think, by any measure. Yes. Now we're at the point. We are at the main event. We're at Notre Dame to close the season. And then the Pac-12 championship And RJ, now, we, we can jump a little bit to the Pac-12 championship because even though we're going to well, play Notre Dame, we're not looking past them. The Pac-12 championship game, it's now going to be after Utah lost today 
the winner of USC UCLA. And That's each right. of those stories is compelling. SC would love to get another chance at the Cardinal. That would be a very exciting matchup. UCLA with Josh Rosen. I mean, either one of those will, will be a significant one, challenge. One for the memory books and, and very much a challenge. It's hard to beat teams more than once in a year. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, it's happened before. We've done that. But uh, it would be, boy, I kind of want the Trojans, right? You want the Trojans because if you could beat the Trojans twice on the way to the Rose Bowl, I think that's about as good as it gets if you threw in Christian McCaffrey. With well, the and how many teams have ever beaten Notre Dame and USC in consecutive weeks? I mean, you talk about mm. the two most storied programs in the history of college football. Nobody's got more Heisman Trophy winners. Nobody's got more national championships. Well, and they, Stanford, I think they have what? And Notre Dame has maybe eight, or USC even. has eight. Well, yeah, well, we, except that with, pay attention with, to the with, S, with SC, every, every, uh, every year or two, they sort of scour the media guides and they come up with another national championship. That's one of their specialties. So, wow. uh, no, those are t the two. You know, other than Stanford, you look at that among the top, 20 programs of the last of the 100, 100 years of, of the last 100 years of college football USC and Notre Dame are the private schools that have had the most most success on the football field so Stanford University trying to get up into that upper echelon the Cardinals trying and uh, it's going to take a long time to get into those levels you only need about eight national championships we have one 1926 it's been a while but uh, to be able to get in and, and to, to get past those programs on your way would be very special all we could then hope for is somehow Michigan were to get into the Rose Bowl, and now we're talking. Well, I think the point is we're talking about a lot of great possibilities. And this is great very, football. A very, very heady, very exciting time for Stanford fans, and yes, we're talking about Notre Dame, we're talking about the Pac-12 championship, but you can go ahead and enjoy the victory here in the 118th big game. Stanford wins it 35-23. to 23. They've got Notre Dame next week. A lot to look forward to. If nothing else, a lot more Christian McCaffrey to look forward to. So, for Jim Rutter, I'm RJ Abeda here on the Bootleg Post game report. Stanford wins big game 35 23 over California. They are the Pac 12 North champions yes. and they move on to fight another day. So long, Stanford fans.